start sessions off and we're coming off lunch and I want that food coma to set in. So I'm gonna have you all stand for a second. So I'm also a father of three girls. My oldest is 10 years old and she's at the age where she's starting to get embarrassed by mom and dad. So we can't cheer too loud at basketball games. So we always joke about one of these days we're gonna throw a party for her, show up at school. And we all know those, if you go past the used car lot, those floppy little inflatables, my wife and I always kind of tease her that one of these days we're going to show up in one of those inflatable costumes and just sit there and yell, yo, go Cambry, and flop up and down. So to get the blood flowing, to start out for 30 seconds, I want to see everyone's best inflatable blow up uh, <laughs> that you can do, the best example that you can uh, get going. So we're going to really get that blood flowing, okay? Three, two, one, let's see it. Get it going. Woo! 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 All right. Woo! We're feeling loose, engaged. All right. You go, go ahead and uh, be seated. One of the things that we talked about this morning is the importance of passion. And if you talk to some of my team members or even some of our clients, one of the things that you'll find out is I'm very passionate about the topic of employee engagement, the employee experience, and uh, really, how, how do we transform that? How do we elevate the work experience? How do we transform the way team members view and interact with their workplace? And we, we don't take that lightly. And, and so our purpose statement is we believe every moment matters in pursuit of building high and thriving relationships with their team members to transform how they interact and, and view with their workplace. And, and so that's kind of the session title for today. That was the genesis of a conversation that Jen and I had going almost on two years ago as we looked to redesign and re-implement their program at Nielsen IQ. Before we get into the program, I want to start with defining a moment here quickly. So. This is Webster's Dictionary of a Moment, so just a very brief period of time, um, and one that signifies importance. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on here because I wanna to get to a book recommendation. So we've had the purpose statement of Every Moment Matters for a couple of years now. Uh, earlier, well, probably late last year, but earlier this year, someone recommended that I read The Power of Moments, and I thought that was very fitting. So I don't know if you've read that by Chip Heath and Dan Heath. If not, I encourage you to read that because I think it, it, it applies to our industry so well. Uh, I mean, I highlighted almost that entire book. My wife thought I was crazy because she's like, how, like there's nothing of importance here if you highlight everything. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that the book was rich, full of content. And I love that we all have defining moments in our lives, meaningful experiences that stand out in our moment in our memory, and a defining moment is a short experience that is both memorable and meaningful. So they talk about in the book, if we were to plot out our life, 80% of our life kind of falls within this little curve. It just kind of occurs and, and we navigate the day to day, but the things that really drive that emotional spark for us, the things that we really remember are the 20% deviations, the real peak or pit moments of our life. Maybe it's a loss of a, a loved one, uh, so that, you know that pit moment and how other loved ones come around you and support you in that moment but that is a that's a pit moment that you have the opportunity to elevate for someone and the other ones are are peak moments the the surprise and delight moments the things that you weren't expected that weren't part of the status quo that really uh, create that uh, emotional connection and stand out for you and, and so there's some characteristics here for defining elements of those peak moments. These peak moments need to, they need to break the norm. They need to rise above the everyday routine. They need to deliver some realization and transformation, some insight, commemorate some achievements. There's a pride aspect of that. And these peak moments deepen relationships with others. And this was the point in the book when I read that. And I thought about the work that we do and what recognition really is and how recognition done right after the, after the fact display of appreciation, the surprise and a delight acknowledgement of somebody's actions or behaviors. 
and the power that we all have as individuals to express gratitude, to share affirmation, to create peak moments for others. We have the opportunity to create a peak moment for somebody this morning with a text telling someone why you were grateful for them and what they mean to you. That's probably a surprise and delight moment that they weren't expected to receive. There's probably an emotional spark or connection to that. And if you are specific with your feedback, which we know is a best practice of recognition, they're then getting some realization that can lead to future transformation and behaviors from that. And hopefully that moment is deepening your relationships and connections. That's the genesis of behind every moment matters and why that's so important to us and, and was the foundation of Jen and I's conversation as we talked about what else can we do for Nielsen IQ and their 34,000 team members across the globe. And so Jen, why don't we start by you just telling us a little bit about Nielsen IQ, uh, who you guys are as an organization, what does the makeup of your, your team members look like, and, and just give the audience a quick intro in. Sure, thanks Andrew. Can everyone hear me okay? about this. Um, so everybody probably heard of Nielsen, they do the, the TV and the radio ratings. Back in the day, you would get a little booklet at home and you could fill it out. <clears throat> well, just about beginning of 2021, um, Nielsen decided to split into two companies. So Nielsen Media was going to take the, um, the television and the uh, television radio ratings. And then the company that, that I went with, Nielsen Connect, was taking the consumer goods, products, and services. And so we do all of the data, me data measurement and analytics um, for those companies. So, and as Andrew mentioned, we're about 34,000 employees in, I think it's 90, a little over 90 countries. Um, and so we've got, um, you know, all different facets of, of business all over the world and, you know, just lots of different uh, customers, so. Awesome. The relationship with recognition uh, in Nielsen IQ has dated back over seven years. So we've started out running a global nominations program for them. Jen, can you tell us a little bit of, around about the global nominations program, how it was structured, uh, how it kind of worked, and, and what that looked like uh, sure. for seven years? Yeah, so the, the program that was in place predates me was called Simply Excellent. It was in place for eight years. Um, it was only available to um, managers and what they were allowed to do was basically for any reason give um, a monetary award in one of these six different increments. They were all sort of based on Olympic medals, so gold, silver, bronze. Um, so it, it was a top down. Um, it required one to two levels of um, approvals and it was just did not have a widespread reach. So it wasn't for the, you know, the everyday moments. It was for big accomplishments, you know, big project ends, things like that. And um, it only hit, uh, it was about 40% of our workforce only ever recognized any type of an award from that. So, um, yeah, so overall, as we look back on the program, I think for, for what a nominations program was intended to be, it was a very successful program. It reinforced the core values. It, it shone a light on those um, you know, those above and beyond moments uh, allowed people to participate. You know, we had some challenges uh, with the fact that it was manager driven. So in their management hierarchy in the bands, only band five and above could actually start a nomination. So a lot of frontline team members weren't empowered to engage with the program. But if we look at uh, the past couple of years of data, uh, by all means, it was a pretty successful program when you think about running a global nominations program and, and driving on average over 13,000 nominations a year uh, through that program. We also then supported that program with Cheers for Peers, which were e-cards, uh, had no monetary value, no points could be exchanged, just peer recognition. And you can kind of see those numbers throughout there. So we were driving about 20,000, 23,000 in the high water mark in 2020 with the amount of e-cards sent through the system. And then we had a little uh, dip in, in 2021, but that, that was always tough to build the momentum and energy around that. Yeah, and that was also the split. So Nielsen Media went off and Nielsen Connect. So just about half the organization, so. 
So Jen, I know you hit on this a little bit, but maybe you can speak to why um, we made the decision uh, to take a very successful program, a program that's been around for seven to eight years, that was generating a lot of success stories, highlighting those shining star moments within the organization, and why we wanted to embark on all of the work, the change management process, and, that, and the pain that comes with blowing up a program that's been a, a pretty successful but legacy program yeah. and, and really starting new. Yeah, so actually my predecessor, Debbie, who Brad and Andrew knew and started working with, for, for many years, um, Debbie was always a proponent that we needed to move into a more of a peer-to-peer -peer recognition. This top-down, it was good, it was, you know, it was recognizing some people, but we just didn't have the reach across the organization to impact everybody. Um, so, you know, we wanted this, this broader reach. We wanted to be able to empower employees to, you know, recognize each other whenever they felt necessary, you know, day to day, week to week. Um, and then also we were looking to maybe um, see some improvements in our Gallup Q12, our recognition question, because we had consistently been seeing very low scores and in 2021 had the lowest score for that Q4 for the recognition. So yeah, I, th I think that was one of the great challenges that uh, Jen and Debbie came to us when it came time for the annual review of, you know, when we look at the level of spend, when we look at the, the legacy program, uh, you know, there's starting to be some questions of, you know, we're, we're funding a pretty healthy budget here, and yet on our Gallup Q12 survey, have I been recognized in the last seven days or not was the lowest score out of the, the whole survey and, and the, the lack of reach that we saw and, and just some challenges with employee engagement statistics and, and turnover in the call center organization in general, the question was, isn't there a better way? Isn't there a better solution? So as we started down the program redesign conversation, Jen, can you share with uh, the audience what were some of the the main goals and objectives that uh, started the redesign conversation? Well, <clears throat> as I mentioned, we, we really wanted to put the trust and uh, you know empowerment into the employees. We wanted to remove that um, the requirement for management approvals. And that was, you know, that was a challenge. Our our senior level um, managers were like, well, what if you know I give you all my points and you give me all my points? And, and you know, we, we worked a lot with the recognition and said well you know we, we don't think that's going to happen and you know we, we just want to put the trust in the employees to be able to you know tell each other thank you um, also you know by giving everybody all 34,000 employees the, the chance to do the recognition we could just reach so much more of the organization I think with um, the manager band five and above I think we were around three to four thousand were the only number of um, employees that could actually give any recognition out and then, you know, we talked about we wanted to maybe see that Q12 um, recognition question go up, you know, some, some improvement in retention and employee engagement. And um, one of the other ones was we didn't really have a good handle on the budget for the previous nominations program um, because, you know, managers would just submit awards and they would get approved. And so, you know, maybe the budget was a million dollars and it ended up being spent at two. So under this, with giving out points and um, being able to control that, we were also able to rein in and stick with the actual budget. Yeah, so a variety of things there. I, I think one of the big things that I wanna highlight, uh, something that really resonated with me was that comment of autonomy, empowerment, and trust. Uh, and with us creating these discretionary buckets for peers to recognize team members whenever and however they feel necessary. You know, the big question of abuse, was that going to happen? And we had implemented this with several other programs and, and spent a lot of time back and forth with the leadership team reinforcing that, you know, we have the systems that can track if abuse is happening over time. We don't see it a lot, but uh, I, I like the notion of you know, if we want our employees to be engaged and we want them to trust us, well, it is a relationship. Shouldn't the organization take the first step in entrusting and empowering them with a recognition program? If our entire recognition and engagement program right from the get-go says we don't trust you to give you five to ten dollars a month to recognize whoever you want however you want and highlight the moments that matter for our organization doesn't that already break that line 
of trust and, and, and create a fractured relationship right from the get-go. And, and that was something that really stuck with me uh, as we worked through this that, that I thought was really impactful. So where did we start? Many of you probably have seen the recognition pyramid, right? You understand um, the you know, formal to informal to day to day. Uh, formal is typically where the highest dollars are spent per uh, award, but only reaches 10 to 20 percent. Informal is at 30 to 40 percent reaching impact, but at, at a higher dollar amount. And, and then day to day is where you know you kind of have that lower kind of per, per transaction recognition can occur, but the goal is to really broaden the reach. And, and so what we did is. We took a look at the data point of we're averaging 13,000 nominations. The average nomination value was $160. So if you do the math on that, again, a very healthy program budget. And we said, what if we blow that up, get rid of all of the formal uh, and informal recognition that was happening, but start from the base of getting a strong peer-to-peer -peer recognition in place first. Start with the foundation and we can always come back and scale up and ladder up from there. Let's start with driving more engagement. Let's get utilization up. Let's create more moments and, and create more uh, success stories around that. And, and so that's where we started. Um, so Jen, uh, we're, we're gonna highlight uh, the journey here a second. So you can see we started the program analysis and, and budget redesign in April of 21. Uh, ultimately, took uh, all the way to February of 2022 before we were ready to shut down the other program and relaunch this anew. So Jen, can you just talk about the journey uh, the, uh, you know, in that time frame, all the spreadsheets, the presentations, the communications, the, the revisions, uh, communicating to uh, the leadership team, what, what was that experience from your side going through that? Yeah, so it, there was a lot that was going on. We had um, the, the previous program that had been in place for eight years that a lot of people were just against any kind of change. Um, so, you know, we, we did all kinds of analysis on all the um, nominations that were given the previous year and for what types of awards and the frequency. And, you know, we were trying to, trying to, to convince senior leadership that this peer to peer would be a lot more effective, reach a lot more people. Um, but we also had to sort of build in a little bit of a caveat for some of these nominations um, because we, we just, we weren't able to totally take that away. Um, so, you know, we did all kinds of analyzing of all those 15,000 um, awards in 21 and, you know, we pitched to our CHRO, our CEO, um, revised and, you know, changed what the program was going to look like. We <clears throat> talked with our um, HR leadership team, um, and you know there were definitely some things we learned that we probably could have done a little bit differently throughout this process. But um, you know we got there and launched in February, and um, everybody was pretty excited about it. Can we talk about the, also the importance for you of having that strong kind of partner relationship, and, and at the end of the day, maybe you and, and Debbie through the process of you know, probably spreadsheet number 25, internal presentation number 20, uh, ultimately having to stick to your guns and just yeah. be the advocate for your team members and, and really just, I don't wanna say force, but yeah. strongly, you know, press a, a, among the senior leaders in the organization that this is the direction we need to take to, to elevate engagement and, and transform that experience. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was really challenging, we had, you know, a number of um, very vocal leaders that were really against this. Um, and, you know, we were bringing them all of the, the statistics and the uh, information that recognition was giving to us about how this was, you know, really what the industry was doing. We were kind of behind the times, how this was gonna help with, you know, budget and it was gonna help with engagement. And um, we did get the buy-in from our chief HR officer. And, you know, we just, we just throughout the process, even after launching, we just really had to stick to this is what we were going to do. We were going to do peer to peer, these big, you know, five hundred dollar awards and things like that. You know, sorry, they're just not what the program is anymore. And um, it, 
it was probably the first two months were, were very difficult and just, you know, reaching out to Andrew and his team and getting support and, um, you know, getting support from my manager that, you know, we're just going to stick to our guns and this is what the new program is going to look like and it's going to be really successful. Can you speak to the metric and, and maybe the emotional metric that stuck for your CHRO and, and leadership team of the bogey that they wanted us to go get that was ultimately the genesis for getting this program approved? Yeah, so Andrew mentioned we had about 13 to 15,000 recognition moments um, in 2021. And so this notion somehow came up that we were going to shoot for 200,000 recognition moments in 2022. And um, Sean, our chief HR officer, she like grabbed onto that like a magnet and she was, you know, putting that out in every town hall and every meeting and, you know, Andrew and Debbie and I were like, oh my gosh, like she's telling everybody this is what's going to happen and <laughs> gosh, we hope it does. And, um, yeah, we'll, tell, we'll, tell we'll share data today. here in a little bit. All but right. uh, yeah, that, that, that was going to be, hey, that, that was an emotional connection to a metric that, that really put this over uh, the finish line, I, I think is, we were even going into November and trying to work through the budget redesign and get it approved for how we had laid it out. Um, there was a lot of waffling still going on in the 11th hour uh, of this program, but it was that emotional connection to the number of moments that we want to impact the organization with. If we think about, you, you take 200,000 and divide that among 34,000 team members, how many touch points are each team member going to receive over the course of the year versus Right now, we're only reaching maybe 40% of our organization. And, and, and that's not driving the impact and the engagement we want. So if we can generate 200,000 moments of gratitude, of appreciation, of positive reinforcement and acknowledgement through this program, that, that would be success. And so where did we land on the redesign? So if we go back, we had a, a nominations program. Again, band five and above could nominate. The entry level nomination was a $50 award, and then all the way ranging up to a $2,500 award. So big dollars tied to these nominations. Um, we wanted to create enough budget for everybody, but yet we knew we were playing with a big math game. So we approached this redesign uh, with some goals. Uh, I'll speak first to the redesign. So in the redesign, we were going to give every frontline team members $10 a month to drive peer-to-peer -peer recognition. They uh, were going to attach points to e-cards. We developed custom e-cards that were uh, tied to the organization's core values, as well as the behaviors that they were promoting and talking about within their organization. So every e-card that gets selected, you put a personal note to it, uh, that is tied to one of the behaviors so that we can report on that. And then you can select whether you wanna give $1 worth of points and, and do it multiple times, $5, or if you wanna spend it all at one time, get $10, but that was your max for the month. It's a use it or lose it model. And so if you don't spend your $10, if you only spent five as you go into the next month, you will be refilled only $5. You're maxing back up at that $10 threshold. We were then gonna give leaders in the organization $50 a month. They were used to having bigger dollars and recognition budgets to play with. And, and so we had to hear the organization of the concern of, well, I'm used to being able to nominate someone for a $1,000 award or, or $2,500 award, and now you're telling me I can only give somebody $20 or $25? And, and so we spend a lot of time through the change management process there. And then executives get $100 a month. Again, all tied to peer-to-peer uh, -peer e card programs, tied to the desired behaviors. Uh, but the individuals, and this was where the trust comes in, have complete autonomy for how much they're given per moment and to whom they are providing that recognition. And so the challenge with this is if you were to just do this math, among the 34,000 team members, we are going to blow their budget out of the water. At 100% issuance and 100% redemption, the budget does not work. But what we know about a lot of these other programs is, it doesn't matter how successful or engaged the audience is, you know, the, this notion that you're gonna get 100% issuance on a monthly basis and 100% engagement and adoption and the lagged redemption of that, 
uh, is not going to happen. And so we did a lot of data modeling, studying a lot of other programs, and, and we went in with a benchmark uh, thinking that 60 to 65% of these points would be issued on a monthly basis with a lagged redemption rate of about 60%. And so in that model and bill on redemption from a cash flow out, that gave us some room and wiggle room in the budget to be able to make that work. Uh, the nice thing with the points is as a team member, if a team member turns and they have points in their um, bank, that we could expire those points out of the system because it's not bill on issuance, it's bill on redemption. And so that helped with some of the budgets. Uh, and so that, that is where we started out looking from a, a target goal in, in an analytic standpoint. So, Jen, after we relaunched the program, can you speak to some of the feedback that you received in the first 30 to 60 days? Because there was no shortage of emails coming into your inbox. Yeah. Again, you changed a program of seven to eight years into a model like this. What were some of the positives that you heard? What were some of the negatives? Sure. Um, Andrew said I was getting tons and tons of emails um, trying to respond to everybody um, you know you, you tend to get the most vocal negative people seem to come forward first um, and you know it, it was just basically that we liked the nominations and you took them away and we want them back and so it was just trying to keep you know educating that that this was about um, this wasn't about the reward amount this was about the recognition moments and the fact that, you know, for the, for the most part, people don't really care if you give them a dollar or $20. The, the fact that they've gotten this thank you from a, a team member or a manager or a senior leader, um, these, these more touch points and they're reaching more people is what we were. So we keep, keep reiterating and, and trying to coach on that. Um, but we received a lot of positive feedback from, you know, the, the front line team members who never even knew the previous program existed because they never received an award mm -hmm. and from you know the the people that weren't able to give awards before about just how cool they thought this was um, we created a yammer site for our program is called bravo um, and we just people were sharing their recognitions on there they're sharing them on linkedin um, everybody's talking to each other you know about giving points and so for as much of the few negative people that spoke up a lot, we had a ton of positive feedback from, from just the general population. Maybe you can speak to your own experience mm -hmm. because we talked about how it, you know, you've been the administrator of this program for some time and yet yeah. you never received a nomination and I or, or the recipient of anything yep. and you could never even nominate someone based on the band hierarchy, but yep. maybe you could talk about your personal journey and, and now your ability to participate slash receive recognition and what that's meant for you. Yeah, so I, I mean, myself never received an award. I wasn't allowed to give them because I wasn't the band five or higher. Um, so that, that first day when the points were deposited into our buckets and we got the emails, it was just really kind of kind of neat to send out that first e-card with points to you know, somebody that just helped me with something very minor day to day on a project. It was nothing huge, but just to send them a card and say, hey, thanks for your help on you know, doing this analysis. And, Here's some points, and then, you know, hearing back from them, thanks, you made my day. Like that was so cool. So it, you know, just so much positive all around, and so many more people that are being um, being touched by this. I think one of the things that we don't track that we're reviewing the data that uh, what we talk about there's just as much value in that emotional connection and that peak moment for mm -hmm. e even the giver of recognition as it is a recipient sometimes. So when we, we enable a reply to e-card function so that we can close the loop of that recognition moment so that when you receive a re, uh, an e-card uh, from a team member and, and you actually get recognized that you have the ability to reply and respond to uh, that individual. And so uh, whether it's the endorphins that happen or just the feel good, when you understand the impact that you're having on other team members and you get that message back, I think that message back can be just as impactful if not more impactful is the initial recognition moment to dr then dry, it drives more adoption. It drives more non-monetary e-cards. It gets others into the platform uh, throughout. Well, and, and you remember the story I told you about, we, we have um, a number of contractors that work for Nielsen IQ. They're not on our payroll, 
Um, unfortunately, we can't give them points because of the tax taxability that goes with the um, taxable fringe benefits, but they can get and receive e-cards. Um, and so we had this one particular contractor, he went to his um, HR business partner and he said to him, wow, he said, I got this e-card, you know, it said, you know, thank you so much for exhibiting this behavior and, you know, you really do great work at Nielsen IQ. And he said he was just blown away and just, it made his week that he was recognized. And so, I mean, that one didn't even have any points or monetary value attached to it. So just being able to reach, you know, even these contractors who aren't, who aren't able to get money, um, but just hearing the thank you from their team members um, made a big impact for him. So I want to talk next about the internal communication. So the, the program's been launched for 30 to 60 days. You're receiving all of these emails. And I'm just curious what the organization did to continue to support the program, whether it's um, you know fun comic strips like this or updates in town hall or different data polls that you get for specific leaders. Maybe you can share with the audience the ripple effects of the organization, the requests that you're seeing, the communication that you're seeing, the ongoing support uh, around this program? Yeah, definitely. We um, we have sometimes a daily company newsletter, sometimes a weekly, and so um, marketing and communications would insert you know little little bits into there about remember to recognize or you know we had twenty five thousand moments this week, um, so putting that kind of information in front of people. Um, being a company that that focuses on analytics, everybody wants to know all the statistics how many e-cards are going out from my department, and how many of my managers are giving out all their points. So we, we were getting a lot of interest in being able to share at department meetings, town halls, you know, how their, um, how their cost centers and departments were doing and what kind of engagement they were getting. Um, we, I, this is an example actually of a, a team member that's in uh, one of our organizations in, um, He's in uh, Apnea, I think, and he took it upon himself. He created this series of three comic strips that had to do with our program, and they were published on his, um, you know, his organization's Yammer website. And I think he ended up tagging me so that I could see them. And then, you know, I shared with Andrew, and I shared on the Yammer Bravo site, and you know, it was just, it was so neat to see you know this this organization they don't work in you know comp and ben or total rewards and they were getting really excited and coming up with these neat little neat little graphics um, to promote the program as well maybe we can read through the comic strip and it, i'll give you the honor if you would like because oh, sure. I, I know people can't see it but yeah uh, from a recognition best practices standpoint i think several members of the, the room here will be thrilled to hear what this individual came up with and the recommendations and, and just the content of this. Uh, and they did it on their own. Yeah, let me see if I can read it as well. So it says, I want to thank my colleague, but I don't know what message to leave on Bravo. And then he says, firstly, ensure your message specifies, specifies clearly the actions and tasks you are grateful for. If you aren't specific, the person you're thanking won't know why you're thanking them. This does not have to be long, just be direct and sincere. And she says, and how do I know when to attach points to the card and when not to? He says, we are allocated a limited number of points each month, so we have to assess when it is appropriate to give points. If your colleague went above and beyond to help you deliver a project, that could be a good opportunity to award them points. On the other hand, if you're wishing someone a happy birthday, instead of giving them points, take them out for coffee and cake instead. She says, these are really good questions. And then we have, thanks, this was really helpful. Let me get started on recognizing my colleagues right away. So I thought that was just you know, affirming a lot of best practices and content right in there on how to utilize it, how to drive moments, when to attach points, when not to uh, possibly attach points, and, and how, how do we amplify it and, and put this program uh, to best use. So. Next, we're going to flip to uh, the, the results and, and discuss some of the learning. So, um, because this deck had to be submitted ahead of time, this is the data points in January through May of 2022. Now, just remember, we relaunched the program in February, so we're really comparing January uh, through May of 2021 to February of May 
2022. So in 2021, there was 5,174 nominations spent. In January, we still had the old program in place for a period of two weeks before we shut the program down and prepared for the relaunch. So there are 617 nominations submitted during that time. The number of e-cards, which was Cheers for Peers at that time, in 2021 had 4,867 e-cards sent. Compare that to what we saw January, really February through May of 2022, and we're at 325,961,000 moments, e-cards sent to team members, blowing the 200,000 moments out of the goal, uh, out, out of the water before we're even halfway through the year. What was interesting as we look, dove deeper into the analytics is we had a unique sender percentage of e-cards in 21 of about 7.7%, reaching only about 3% of the employee population. Again, it wasn't very well known uh, because of the nominations program and band five and above, we, we really had limited reach. Overall team login, member login percentage, so the unique logins that we can track, we only had about 7.3% of the 34,000 team members that had logged in the previous year with a total moments of about 10,087 and an average value per moment of about $154. So as that data builds throughout the year, that's how we get to that 38 to 40% reach and kind of log in right over the year, but contrast that to what we see this year. In that initial launch, so February through May, we had a unique sender percentage of 65.1%. So 65.1% of the 34,000 team members sent an e-card to somebody else. We had a unique recipient reach of 73.4%. So instead of just reaching 3% of the organization, we have now reached over 73.4% of the organization with these moments, with this recognition. Total number of moments, 392,451. We are actually surprised that we are on the higher side. Again, I said we thought we would see 60 to 65% engagement from a points issuance rate. We actually landed closer to about 70% where we are year to date with the number of points being issued on a monthly basis. What's really interesting here is we talk about the value per moment. So increased number of moments, actually very comparable spend and budgets. But we're taking the average value of a moment from $154 to average value of a moment at $4 per recognition when we look at the total spend across the, the, the program. So a lot lower value, generating a lot more reach, a lot more impact. Jenna, I'm wondering if you can share, because we talked about 34,000 team members in over 90 countries. When we looked at the engagement and activity at a deeper level by country, what did we see? Because we, 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 we wondered about that. Like, is yeah. this gonna be universally adopted and successful across all 90 plus countries? Yeah, and, and we were, you know, pleasantly surprised to see that we were getting pretty equal participation in in all of the countries. Um, so, you know, we weren't seeing, you know, the U.S. participate more, and you know, maybe France less or India. Um, we had just the participation was all across the globe, and everybody was logging in and, and doing recognition. What about from uh, an employment ban standpoint? Uh, yeah. Because we we had some initial concerns of okay, we're going to allocate $100 per executive team. Are they going to really utilize the program? Are our peers going to drive the majority of the activity? Or, or what, what, what's the response from our frontline managers? So may, maybe you can speak to sure. your reactions and what we found in the data that when we segmented it from an uh, employment ban perspective. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we really thought that we were going to see the, you know, the, the points at the frontline um, employee level the highest. You know, we figured, ah, you know, like our... our chief you know financial officer and chief hr officer and you know those in that higher group they you know they're busy they can't necessarily be bothered to go in and we were incredibly surprised to see that there was virtually no difference between the the, the groups of the banding um employee types in how many points that they were giving out each month so you know right from you know chief financial officer down to you know 
a, a manager and a supervisor and just you know a regular employee everybody was was really giving about the same so just the engagement of, across all the groups was incredibly high maybe we can speak to because i know the cfo wanted to do a deeper report wanted to get into the sentiment analysis actually as for all of the actual copy of the e-cards to to evaluate this notion of abuse where team members just giving points to each other in, in a reciprocal way and you know, that one-to-one -one correlation and maybe you can share his reactions and, and your reactions and, and what we found from uh, that deeper dive in the, on, on the topic of abuse and just giving points to a friend yeah sure so um, we we lean heavily on our partner recognition they do um, a ton of data pulling and analysis for us um, providing you know information whenever that whenever we're looking for it and as Andrew mentioned our CFO for um, I think it was Q2 town hall he wanted to see some of this information and um, you know we really didn't find any any um, instances of abuse or you know every month I give mine to you and you give yours to me or um, you know any kind of thing like that we were really just seeing true legitimate you know thank you for what you did and thanks for helping out on the team um, and and then he was I think also really surprised by just in his organization how many e-cards were going out and how many recognition moments and how many of his team members were being touched so I, I think he was one of the he was one of the skeptics and I think we proved to him that it was working Historical question on the um, when when you're giving out those points, are they required to fill out like is it like radio buttons to say this is the category on the behavior or is it just open? Box? So what what they do is they do select one of the e cards. We have eight behaviors, sure. um, so they'll pick an e card. We have a few miscellaneous, you know, happy birthday, sure. anniversary. Um, but other than that, nope. It's totally left up to the employee to decide, you know, why they're giving it and to who. Is it know if you saw any like specific, you know, if you saw very specific reasons why they're giving out? Because we require that in our business. Yeah. But um, we we really force them into a category. Then they have to explain what specifically it was. But just to know if there was anything there. That so we went away from some of the explanation. That we are getting them into the categories based on the the e card, e -card and so we can segment by that. But then we actually pulled the exact text, and, and we're looking at the sentiment analysis and reading through the messages that team members were sending uh, each other to look at the quality of the recognition, uh, to see where there's areas for coaching and improvement, uh, and, and you know, really pleasantly surprised at the quality of the peer-to-peer -peer recognition going on. I, I think what we're seeing in the data and the analytics is we had, a, we had an organization that was starving for recognition, that was starving to be empowered and, and feel the autonomy to do that. And, and they're taking this serious. It's only $10 a month. And so I kind of want to save it up and I want to make sure that if I'm giving my points out, that it's, a, and it's an impactful moment. It, it is that moment that matters for our organization. And, and we saw that throughout uh, when, when we were looking at the, uh, uh, the tax and the e-cards. Can an employee or a people manager give recognition to more than one person at a time? Like, yes. Uh, like a team? Yeah. So they can do a team and, and can choose to fractionally allocate the points all, all at one time okay, cool. via that. Can the points roll over, or meaning if you have ten, if you're front line with ten dollars per month, do you allow that if they don't spend it in this month to roll to the next? That's month designed at a program level. Okay. What we have found is organizations that we allow to bank and roll over their points, we're not getting the same level of adoption and activity because we can drive notifications throughout the month that you have this many points left to recognize a team member. They will expire at this date. If you don't get in and use these, they will be in those notifications, those reminders, those proactive prompts that we can provide to team members are driving surges in activity versus if it's just rolling over, you're not getting that same level of utilization and you're starting to creep up with your average dollar per recognition moment. They're saving them more for those 20, 30, $40 moments, which is limiting our reach. We, we did, um, at Nielsen IQ, decide at the um, senior leader level that $100, that we were gonna let those roll over um, in case they needed to do some of those bigger awards. And they're not rolling over because they're spending them. They're giving out recognition to their, um, you know, their directs and their team members every month. Yeah. How do you differentiate either at the people manager level or the executive level when you've got 
diversity of the number of team members underneath a leader or people manager. Like so, we have businesses yeah. like that call center businesses, right? We might have a team leader that has 100 mm. people versus in a corporate function, you might only have five. Yeah, and, and so, it, you know, we want to keep it simple so we don't designate, you know, you have one employee and you have 50. So, you know, they get the same number of points. And functional area leaders would, because they're still at a certain management yeah. hierarchy are getting the same. As said, as we're looking at the budget for next year, we're gonna segment the, the managers based on number of hierarchies into different brands, so sub-segment those bands. We do have the ability to say you get X dollars per team member that you have under you, but with us investing so heavily, when you think about 34,000 team members at a minimum of $10, with us investing so heavily in that frontline team member, that limited what we could do from a management perspective, but ultimately we made the call that frontline team member engagement was our priority. We can then layer in and work up the management hierarchy from there. And we had to find the balance between, mm -hmm. you know, not making this a, a top heavy, top down program like the nominations, but still giving, you know, managers enough leeway to be able to recognize. So that's where we landed. You know, we're taking feedback all the time. Yes. When is your next Gallup survey? Uh, I think that will go out in November. So we are, fingers crossed, we're really hoping that this is making an impact on employees. Which is a great transition for what's ahead. I mean, this is what we're seeing from a reach standpoint. Um, you know, some of our learnings is, you know, we talked about the importance of, and we're seeing this with a lot of our clients, not just Nielsen IQ right now, really taking dollars from up here and investing in the day-to-day, -day, driving that frontline team member engagement first, and then we can go back and layer on some of the informal and formal programs to support that. Well, what's ahead, Jen, maybe you can speak to this, the, you know, the the frequency in which we continue to pull data and monitor, maybe the frequency you can express how often you're interacting with our team. Um, we know the Gallup Q12 survey is a big inflection point for us that we're all gonna be paying attention to, but maybe you can just speak to what's ahead for us. Yeah, so you know, Andrew probably sees emails that come into his inbox from me and he's probably like, oh gosh, what does she want now? But um, you know, we just, we have a lot of requests. Everybody wants to know, you know, what the numbers and statistics look like. Um, we've started seeing departments that are already, you know, they're doing their own kind of engagement type surveys, and they're already starting to see improvements in scores they're getting from employees. So starting to become a lot of interest. Um, we've now, you know, we've got this foundation program laid. Um, you know, we're looking towards maybe what type of ancillary programs that we could expand into for next year. Um, maybe we look at adding a siloed nominations program with an additional budget that would keep the peer-to-peer -peer very separate. Um, you know, we don't right now have service level awards, um, so we're, that's something else we're looking at. Um, and then, you know, Andrew and I are probably talking at least once a month, um, updating the stats, seeing, you know, what's our points issuance, our points redemption, where do we look with the budget. And so um, it's just, you know, constant communication, taking feedback that, you know, that's provided to me from managers and leaders and talking it over with Andrew and you know, what do we do with that and what can we do with that next year? So just um, a lot of moving parts, but we've got, the, we've got the basic foundation laid and the program is just leaps and bounds above what we th ever thought it would be, so. So speaking of that, I wanna go back to the data slide here a second. I just wanna take a, a moment to acknowledge and recognize Jen uh, for being the frontline ambassador for this program. Uh, I think many of you can empathize with <laughs> what it is she goes through. Uh, the feedback and, and pushback that she receives on a daily basis. This program has exceeded our expectations you know, beyond our wildest dreams. I pulled the data this morning because I wanted to see where we were at. As of yesterday, close of business, we have surpassed 497,000 moments of recognition through the program. We are 3,000 moments away from eclipsing 500,000 moments. Wow. Which makes me think, Gen 1 million is not out of reach this year. Yeah, so okay. our chief HR officer that said our goal was 200,000, Andrew and I are now thinking, no, our goal is a million. Wow. A million so, moments. If we can drive a million moments over 34,000 team members, the impact that we should be able to have on that Gallup Q12 survey, something that gets me fired up. And, and you know, we're grateful for the opportunity to 
uh, share this uh, data with all of you. I think we just surpassed 80% uh, from a login rate and, and an engagement perspective. So we have surpassed what we thought from, a, uh, from an adoption and engagement perspective. And just uh, overall, uh, I, I know I certainly talked with others. I, I mean, taking one of our, our, our you know, great successful partner relationships of seven to eight years and putting a program at risk to flip, you know, completely blow it up and flip the design upside on its head, but in pursuit of driving a better engaged culture for their team members was a big risk. It was a risk for Nielsen, it was a risk for us. Mm -hmm. uh, from a solution provider standpoint, knowing if it doesn't go well, this could end uh, badly, but I'm happy to report that uh, you know, we are thrilled with the data and the results. We thank you for allowing us the opportunity to share this with you, and if there's any further questions on any of the data, We'd be happy to field any emails and any personal connections or any other inquiries on it. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. We want to really appreciate you sharing your story. And it's always great to see real life numbers as of this morning. Um, I also want to thank and acknowledge um, recognition from an R RPI perspective. We've been a platinum sponsor this year. And, and Brad, our CEO, is here too as well. So. Brad, thank you for being here with us. But I want to also recognize Andrew, who recently completed his CRP. And so we have your little pin to give you. Thank you. And put a plug in too. At the um, uh, Salmon Auction, there is actually a CRP course you can go bid on. I think I, I peeked at it. It was about $75, $85 right now. Someone bid on that. So I encourage you to do that. We actually just put 20, uh, 20 one or 20, 20, 20 members, two members, through. and you're actually in the process of going through it. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's a great experience. I did it many years ago, but we had people with 18 years of experience going through it and still got a lot of value. So it really helps build your foundation and the framework to work, um, work internally on your programs or work with clients. So um, shamelessly plugging some RPI, but thank you. Uh, Brad's next, right? That's right. <laughs>